Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to something that we call the lobby, mm -hmm. which is just our time that we get to hang out before the actual service starts. If you haven't joined us before, it's kind of like uh, nine and a half-ish minutes of nonsense, would you say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like friends hanging out in the church lobby like you would do if you were at a physical lobby at a physical church. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, something, yeah. something like that. I think you but, said that right. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're glad that you have found us. We're glad that you've joined with us today. If it's your first time joining with us, we're extra glad. Olivia mm -hmm. has a special shout out for you. Yeah, a special shout out to those who joined us for the first time. Pretty good. Boop, boop. Did you plan that? <laughs> yeah, or like practice that in me? All day long. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really nailed it. Uh, this is my friend Olivia. Hi. Thank you for joining. Yeah. You said it's been me. a while since it's you've been It's been like on a here. month and a half. We joke around about like the lobby on here being very similar with like, well, we intentionally have it very similar to like a real lobby, uh, but you guys are forced to hang out with us mm. on this lobby. Whereas in a real lobby, you guys go and hang out with other people. I've just been hanging out with other people. So, <laughs> but I'm back. I missed you guys. I'm really glad to be back. I really am. Uh, we're yeah. glad to be hanging out with you, forced yeah. or not. Going to be, it, I'm not forced. Yeah, <clears throat> we're, gl we're glad that you're here. <laughs> also, hello, Michael. Hi, everyone. You're on Producer Hi, Cam you. today. Thank you for producing. Hey, Michael. Hi, Olivia. Thank you. <laughs> we know it's um, hard work back there. It's rough. On the Producer Keeping Cam. Keeping you guys in check. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of buttons to push. Uh -huh. um, beep, boop, boop, while beep. we're pushing a lot of your buttons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that actually is probably very <laughs> true. We're sorry in advance. Um, what Could you do that? again for us yeah, beep, boop, 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 beep. yeah. Yep. do we sound better now yeah it's amazing oh, thank you michael oh. that, was, that was really good um so we this is you're seeing us on a sunday uh, as you get ready for uh, worship today um but spoiler alert we record this usually earlier in the week surprise uh, it happens to be valentine's day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and uh, we kind of we kind of like Valentine's Day around here. You planned a really fun party for us yesterday, I did, yeah, uh, which was fantastic. Um, but I'm curious, like in your line of holidays, like where does Valentine's Day mm. fall for you? Yeah, honestly, like I could do without. Mm. I could do without. I think the things that happen on Valentine's Day should just be like periodically throughout the year. Oh yeah. If I were in a relationship. Um, I'm not, so I'm even more likely to put it at the bottom of my list. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's probably one of my least favorites, but it's fun. I think it's a good, like, I like hanging with the gals. Okay. Mm -hmm. You like a Galentine's Day. I'm a fan of those ones yeah. more than the Valentine's Day. Michael, do you plan guy Valentine mm. Galentine's what guy version? I, heard, I saw yeah. Palentine's Day. There. That's, That's cute. Better. But it's Palentine's. That's for everybody. True. I have, I have been to a Palentine's. <laughs> I have not been to a Palentine's. Yeah. No. Are we having a Palentine's right now? Probably. I guess so. <laughs> Happy Palentine's. If you Day. want it to be. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get you guys like chocolate same. or um, a treat fine. or anything for. It's, it's we'll, really fine. We'll, and same with you. We're sorry we don't have a Palentine's Day treat for the for those of <laughs> I you. I feel like this is a treat right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, if you have celebrated. Palentine's. We would love to hear about that mm -hmm. in the chat if you're joining with us live or Galentine's Day or if it's your favorite holiday or your least favorite holiday. We would love just any chat that you would have in our uh, chat right now. It's somewhere down here, right? It, it's right there. there you, you guys know where to find it. Okay. They know where, yeah, they know where to find it. But <laughs> guy and Tines Day. Mm, that's a stretch. Valentine's. Mm, Valentine's Day. Like is that getting sure. closer? Let, let's like just move male, on and, but... and tell, ask what you're going to ask. Oh, I think I asked it oh, already. Yeah. I'm just trying oh. to figure out what, what a guy version of Galentine's <clears throat> Day is. Hmm. No idea. I, I, I don't I, think there should be one. Okay. Just for gals and pals. Yeah, and, gals and pals. And spouses. And vows. Yeah, mm. and vows. Loved ones. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that's good. <laughs> um, so you're down on the bottom. Michael, do you have a, a um, order? It's not. Yeah, it's, it's towards the bottom as well. Okay. Well, I think partially because I'm sick of having my kids receive candy and then mm. want to eat it. Yeah. At this point in the year. How it's do you feel about February? So. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about you receiving candy and eating I, it? I could go without candy. Yeah. Um, a, a nice gift is sometimes okay. Okay. I yeah. do enjoy going out to eat on Valentine's Day, but we don't do that anymore with the children, so that's sure. fine. Yeah. We we are we're planning to make spaghetti. So that's, that's really sweet. very nice because it's red. It, it'll be a fancy <laughs> dinner. Whoa! Yeah. It's red. Yeah, like for Valentine's <clears throat> Day. Yeah, sure. I asked yeah. you this earlier, but I feel like everyone should know. Are you guys going to like 
slurp the noodles at the same time. <laughs> we are not going to do the Lady in the Tramp style okay. noodle slurping. You could. Uh, Olivia is referring to Michael and his wife, Melissa. <laughs> oh, Just sorry, to, yes. Yeah. To clarify. If you haven't heard not us talk Hattie about Michael. Michael. Uh, yeah. If you, haven't heard, <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't heard us talk about <laughs> Melissa and your kiddos. Shout out to kids. Melissa yeah, and three kiddos. kiddos. Yeah. You are having the spaghetti <laughs> dinner. That's that's really sweet. Um, are your kids? Is Charlie doing anything for Valentine's Day? Do they have a school um, party? Yeah, <laughs> I think the school. I think they just get like a little Valentine's thing and maybe do like a Valentine craft. Okay. Uh, she's with her dad this year on Valentine's, so mm. I'm assuming he'll probably take her on like a date or something. He yeah. Does, yeah. He does that kind of thing with her. So. When you guys were growing up, did you make Valentine's Day boxes? Absolutely. Yeah, for those sure. were the coolest yeah. things ever. I made a shark sure. once. Okay. It's pretty proud of it. Oh, uh, is there any down. chance we could get the shark a f picture of it before with Michael holding and get it? it? On I here? don't think so. Oh man. I don't really even cool. know if I have a picture because that was before digital oh. cameras were sure. a thing. Yeah. I kind of just had a really great idea. Maybe you could make one mm -hmm. like today. Take a photo of you with it, and we can just insert that. Sorry. That's pretty good. Not just think about it. Yeah. No, sorry. That's a really quick answer. Just think a little bit. <laughs> You've got a lot of free time to make a Valentine's right. Day yeah. box just for mm -hmm. the lobby purposes. No problem. I think one year, I don't know if it was me or my sister, but one of us made like the best robot. It was like oh, a Valentine's Day robot that's box. That's pretty cool. It was, it was pretty cool. I must have not cool. made cool ones because I cannot remember you a single one. You don't remember one. any? No, nope, but um, I know I made them. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Apparently, it's still a thing. I asked my sister my, today. My, my girls nephews. made, Did they? made them. What were mm -hmm. they? Uh, they did Taylor Swift mm. boxes, which... Amazing. They love Taylor Swift right now. So. Yeah. That's adorable. They How all did? All three of them? <clears throat> um, oh, man. What was Liza's? Liza's was different, but I can't remember right now what it was. Oh, Bluey. Okay. <laughs> Bluey. Yeah, that's pretty cute. That's uh, good, uh, since we can't get a picture of Michael Shark, can we get a picture of your girls' Taylor Swift? <laughs> Boxes. I don't think that we took pictures of them. Oh man, it's, it's not that memorable. It's not. Well, you did say it was one of your le least favorite holidays, yeah, so sorry. you don't mm -hmm. need to take pictures of it. Mm -hmm. um, last week, I unfortunately or fortunately outed myself as a Taylor Swift fan. We were talking about the Super Bowl. Chiefs were in the Super Bowl. They yeah. won. I was going for them because you know Taylor. Weird Taylor Swift. But here. I also said I didn't want them to be in the Super Bowl. But now I feel like I have to double down on it, and they're cool because. They made Taylor Swift Valentine's mm -hmm. Day boxes. That's I'm kind of neutral. Yeah. Like Taylor Swift has some good songs. Yeah, some great ones. That's all I feel. So, some really great ones. <laughs> Michael has covered some Taylor Swift songs. His band has, and they yeah. are fantastic. They are. Except for I always want you to do a few more than what you My actually do. My goal is to learn the Taylor Swift's least streamed songs. Yeah. Oh, those, those are probably all the ones that I like. Right, those are probably the ones I would like. <laughs> the good ones. <laughs> I, whatever Taylor Swift songs, I'm happy to have you, mm -hmm. have you play them. Do we like get cut off if we say Taylor Swift too many times on here? Like, not. is there like copyright? Our views will probably go up actually. Okay, so will... keep <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, but no. stay tuned because not all of us like Taylor Swift. So if you're joining yeah. with us and you're like, oh Taylor Swift, we'll just hold on. <clears throat> if we... David was here, which he's not, he would have a lot of. Uh... I can be David right now. Okay, let's move on. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't we think you'd be that Jesus. aggressive. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. This is a <clears throat> silly conversation. Okay, yeah, you'll work on that. I'll work Channeling on that. Channeling your inner David. I don't even know how to be David. <laughs> I've never thought about it. Uh, you have to take some notes. Back to the Valentine's Day boxes. If you are joining with us live, we would love in the chat to hear your best Valentine's Day box that you ever made. Because mm. that would just be or, or if you have kids and they made them this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, will, we would love to hear that. And like, oh, that's so. not just like a Midwest thing, right? Is that, that's got to be all over. Mm. No and idea. if boxes like aren't a thing for you, yeah. like you don't care for them, comment your favorite Valentine's Day candy. Mm. That's important. Yeah. We all like our Valentine's Day candy. I did want to do. I did want to say something really fast. Please. I got a drink today for Valentine's. My mom got me one, and there's really sparkles sweet. in there. I. You I showed me you before we started. I don't think they'll be able to see it, but that's a great modeling. <laughs> Move, please zoom in. <laughs> Is this a commercial for yeah, uh, uh, caffeinated? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, caffeinated, for my drink. We also have. Um, Meg Latte is representing uh, today, but thank you for showing us your sparkles. That was really good. We're going to go into the service time because uh, it's just time. It's time for Jesus. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we hope that you have a good coffee or something uh, to drink with you as we go into uh, today's service time. Pastor Mark has a great message for us. We have a time of worship before that. Before we get to that, we'll see you in just a bit.
Well, hey, church fam, we are so excited that you have joined us today. We've got a great time of worship planned for you, a great message from Pastor Mark. We are in week two of our series, Guided. Yeah. And if you weren't with us last week, it was really good. Yeah, go, go back and check it out. Yeah, where can they do that at? YouTube. Yeah. That's the best place. Okay, go to YouTube, check it out. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, we're really excited because Pastor Mark is talking about how we are guided by God's word today. Yes. Uh, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, but right now, church, we have some time of worship. So let's worship together.
Spirit of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Thy word is a lamp unto my feet And a light unto Thanks again, church, for joining us today. And in just a little bit, we have a great message for you. But right now, we want to encourage you, if you have kids, we have a message that's for them. It's called New Hope Here Kids. Pastor Andrea does a little intro talking about what's going on in the day. And then there's a, some time of worship and a message for your children. So grab a second device, click the link in the chat, hand that to your children, and hopefully they can ho focus on the message that's for them. And then you can hopefully focus on the message that's for you. Yes, in church right now, if you're joining with us live, there's a link popping up in the chat. That is a link to our Connect card. And we want to encourage each of you to fill one of those out. We love getting to know who is joining with us every week, who's worshiping yeah. with us every week. We consider you part of our church family. So we would love to get to know your name. Uh, a great way for us to do that is by having you fill out the Connect card. Also, if you're joining with us live, you could put that in the chat right now. Yeah. We'll say a special hello to have you uh, for you joining with us today. Uh, so click the link, fill out the Connect card. If you're not live right now, uh, you can always fill that out at newhopehere.com slash connect. We would love to be able to connect with you. 
Yes, and church, we want to continue worship by giving back to God his tithes and our offerings. And a simple way to do that is by clicking the link in the chat. It will take you right where you need to be. Um, but we just want to say thank you to those of you that faithfully give each week. And if, uh, if that's not you yet, uh, we want to encourage you to just listen to God. See if that's the next step that he has for you today. But uh, yeah, just another thank you to those to those of you. Yes, and uh, also we would love to be able to pray for you. I talked about that a second ago with the Connect card, uh, but if you are joining with us live, we have hosts that are ready and available to pray for you. All you have to do is click the link that's in the chat. It'll take you to like a private chat uh, where you can share your prayer requests and have somebody pray for you right now. Uh, and church, before we get to our message time today with Pastor Mark, which is going to be so, so good, yes. we would love to be able to pray for you. So let's pray together. God, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this time uh, that we get to just kind of pause what we're doing, Lord, and spend time just interacting with you, uh, worshiping you and praising you, Lord, and uh, lifting up prayer requests, things that we are needing or longing or looking for, God. Uh, we're just so thankful that you are a God uh, who is right here in the midst of all of it with us, God, whether we're busy right now or in the middle of work or we've got kids around us or maybe we are in a quiet place where we can really spend time focusing on you. Lord, you are bigger than all of those things and you meet each of us in all of those things and so we're just so grateful for that today father that that is who you are uh, that you just long to be near to us and to connect with us uh, and so Lord we pray that as we hear from Pastor Mark today that we are just uh, each encouraged uh, in our own walk with you in our own relationship with you um, on, on how you are guiding us God speak so clearly to us Lord show us a next step of faith uh, Lord, show us the ways that maybe you are guiding us right now. Maybe recently you've opened a door, you've closed a door, or you've spoken something clearly, but we're just questioning a little bit. Lord, I just pray that you would make those things so clear to us so that we could just follow you better today, uh, Lord. Uh, we pray for each person who's joining with us today, God, uh, that you would just meet them in the middle of their needs, uh, whether they let, let us know something that they need prayer for, Lord. We all know that we need prayer, and so we just pray over each of those requests today, God, knowing that uh, you are working in those situations. So Lord, we love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, today we are looking at our series, Guided, and I just think it would be so awesome if God would always speak to us anytime we have a question, trying to figure out, am I supposed to take this job? Am I supposed to date this person? Am I supposed to marry this person? If we could just say, okay, God, just tell us. And if he would just speak to us audibly, say, this is the plan, this is what you're supposed to do. Think of how simple life would be. I mean, every prayer uh, life that you have, every time you go into prayer, you'd say, okay, God, what do you have for me? And he'd say, this is what I want you to do. The thing is about that, though, if he did that for us, there would be no continual communing with God. It's like, okay, 30 seconds, I got my answer, I'm gone and not building up a relationship with him. And I don't think that's the way that God wants it to be for us. He wants us to be dependent on him, so he does not speak directly. But that does not mean that he is not speaking. He is always intending to guide us. It is not some mystery that we have to beg God, try to convince us, show us, what is your will? How do I know what you want me to do? I've got this decision and it's not clear what it's supposed to be and I could do this or I could do this or maybe four or five options. And So God, show me what it is. He wants to show us, but it's not always that simple. Now today I wanna to talk to you about what I think is the simplest way that God gives us directions. Later on, we'll be looking at those more vague, unsure, how do you tell if this is God speaking type of things. But when it comes to the Word of God, and that's what we're looking at today, is guided by His Word, the Scripture, Bible. 
when it comes to that, it is very clear some of the things that he wants us to know. So when we look at God's word, in fact, we'll see it in the scripture that we'll be reading here, he will use several different terms for it. He calls it his commands or his laws or his precepts, his statutes, his decrees. All of that are the times where God is very clear. This is what you shall do. In fact, we know it as the Ten Commandments is the simplest part of that. Thou shalt or thou shalt not making it very clear what we are supposed to do. Yet it's amazing how many times we don't go to God's word to find it, or we don't know where to go in his word, or we aren't paying attention to it when the word has been told to us. So I want to read from Psalm 119. And the first verse is actually towards the end of that psalm. The whole psalm is talking about God's word and the value for us. But in verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Then I'm going to jump up farther in that chapter to verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord, teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. So in all of these ways, it's talking about following God's word. The word of God illuminates. It's a light that shows us the next step. We often want to see way down the road, see 15 steps. Where is this all going to lead? Then I'm ready to take the first step. But that's not the way that God works. He leads us. It is a light to our paths. So it's illuminating the direction that we should go. That it is is his plan for us. Now that light is both situational, the situations you find yourself in. It's a lamp for my feet. So, or a lamp for my path, excuse me, on that the path. He shows you, okay, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is what I want you to do. So the illumination is showing us next steps. It's showing us what his plan is for. It's very practical, very real directional, saying God wants me to do this. But it's also very personal because it's a light to my path, a a lamp for my feet. This is not just, the scripture is not just, okay, everybody, this is what you're all supposed to do because our lives are totally different and and our experiences are different and the direction he wants to take us. He may be telling you this is the direction, but he's telling me, no, this is the direction because yours is different than mine. And God is very personal with us. There are precepts and we see them in God's word that apply to all of us, but he wants to direct you in the way that you should go. He lights my path, not just lights all the path out there for everyone in the world. So the, they are, will be the right steps for me. Now, whenever I want God's direction, where I usually go with all of that is I want to know what to do next. I mean, obviously, I am struggling with a decision. Do I go this way, this way? Which of these things do I choose? What does God have for my life? In my life, that is always focused around the do, the next step, what I think should be the next action of what he wants me to do. But we often come to the Lord asking for that step without having been in his word at all. The word is a lamp to my feet. And so I've got to be in in God's word. And what happens is I may be ignoring any time in the word of God. I'm not reading his word. I'm not studying his word. I just hear it when I uh, go to a worship service and, and the preacher says something about it or reads a scripture or whatever. But I am not into the word. 
until I come to this direction time. I've got to make this decision. What am I supposed to do? Okay, God, you should be showing me in your word what I'm supposed to do. But a lot of what God's direction is, is showing you how to be, not how to do. Now, we need the how to do stuff, obviously. What do you, what's the next step? What's the action? But he is much more concerned in your life and figuring out who you are. And so too often we go along starving ourselves from the word of God, but then all of a sudden, oh, I need your word. Lord, give me direction. We want your guidance. And we open up the Bible and try to find the magical verse that says, oh, you should take this job. And that's not the way it works because he is much more focused on being who he wants us to be, us seeking him. Because the more time we're spending with him, the more he is changing us, the more he is making us like him. And that's his desire for us. And so being guided needs to start with me being in his word because the word of God transforms us. And some of the direction for that next step may have come if you had been in God's word. But if you haven't been in God's word, all of a sudden, oh, I need direction, God show me. But he wants to transform you, not just say, okay, here it is. This is what you're supposed to do. Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, if you're in God's word, he's constantly renewing your mind. He's making you more like him. So that decision when it comes to that and that next step is going to be much easier to find if you have been imitating Jesus in who you are, not just the next step of what you're going to do. There's nutritional value in the world. It's like eating, like any kind of a diet or regular diet or just what you eat. If you are not regularly eating, then you are not going to be physically growing like you need to be growing. And the Word of God is the same way. I mean, I do not remember specific meals. I mean, if you asked me last week, what did I eat? I, you know, if I'd gone out to eat, okay, I can't remember what that was because each individual one doesn't matter. But I had that meal and I will have regular meals on a regular basis. And if I don't have those regular meals, I feel it in my weakness, I feel in my stomach growling, whatever it is, I know I've been missing meals and I go to that. Same thing with the word. If you are regularly in the word, you are gonna be growing to be more like him and the decisions that you need to, to make will be easier if you have been on a steady diet of being in God's word. So we need his word working in us all the time so that we are becoming more like him. Now, with that said, the scripture then guides us into right actions. That was part of what we had read there in the scripture. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So part of what scripture does for us is in purity and obedience and righteousness that keeps us from straying, that helps to keep us from sinning. If I am regularly in God's word taking in that information, I am becoming more like him. So I'm hiding his word in my heart, not hiding it like nobody's going to see this, but I, it's important to me. I plant it in my life because I'm constantly in God's word. So what does that look like in order to make that happen? Because it's one thing to say, oh, you should be in the word of God. And then you go, okay, somebody that's never read the scripture, where do I start? What do I do? How do I do that? Well, let me share with you some tips of what is helpful in going through God's word. One is remembering a Bible verse or a truth. As a kid, I memorized scripture quite a bit. 
Uh, it was part, I grew up in the church. My dad was a pastor and I went to all the kids' programs where on Wednesday nights or on Sunday mornings and Sunday school, we would memorize scripture. And so I know I memorized a lot of scripture, both as a child and as a teenager. What I find is I have a terrible time remembering a lot of that stuff. In fact, if you just threw out, you know, tell me this and give me a chapter and verse and I'm going, uh, I'm not sure I know that one. For one thing, numbers do not stick in my head. If you know me well, you know I, uh, math is not my thing. I can't add or subtract well. I don't remember numbers. They just do not stick in my head. Other things, not so bad, but numbers, absolutely terrible at. So, if you quoted a scripture verse and said, where is that found? I probably could not tell you. But what is interesting is how often some of the scriptures that I memorized will come back to me. I'll remember at least the gist of it, even if I don't get all the words correctly. Those things come back often at times when I need them the most. See, if you're asking for God's guidance, that is a key way. If you have been memorizing the Word of God, if you have been planting that in your mind, it's there. Whether or not you can pull it out word for word or the right location or all that, doesn't really matter. The Holy Spirit will bring it out at times when you need it. And even sometimes when you don't need it, it's like, wow, when did I learn that? I don't remember that. Yeah, it's there because it's been planted in your mind. And those pieces of scripture will pop up for you or the truths of those scriptures. Where did I learn that? I don't remember that I knew this about God or this about life, but much of that comes from remembering Bible verses or Bible truths that you memorized at some point. So memorizing his word. Secondly, the Holy Spirit illuminates some portion of scripture of the word of God during your regular reading time. One of my habits is reading through the Bible at least once a year. And in my retirement, I'm able to do that more often uh, throughout the year than I was able to when, when I was working full time. But there are times when I go through and nothing stands out. I mean, quite literally, I have read through several pages, several chapters in the Bible, and it's like, okay, that was okay, that was interesting. But on occasion, something will just stand out of, whoa, that is exactly what I needed. That just really speaks to me. And the Holy Spirit brings that around. Sometimes it's totally out of context of what even was being shared there. But those words were for me and I needed that. And I may find out even through that day that those words will come back. And that's why this stood out to you this morning in your reading, because you are going to need that for this next step of guidance of what you're supposed to do. And so habitually being in the word, just reading it through. And again, you will have times when you read scripture and you don't remember a thing that you just read. I've done that. I mean, you get to the end of the page and going, okay, I know I just read that whole page and I, I just did it in my mind and not really thinking about it. It was just rote going through it. Yeah, that happens. Uh, any habits that we develop, we just kind of go through it. And so that's not great, but even that is a discipline of being in God's word, gives God opportunity to guide us along the way. So he illuminates things in his word and brings them clearly to us. A third part is searching the scriptures, actually going in and reading a passage and studying it. It's studying, not just, okay, I read through that and that was an interesting story, but pulling things out of that, so asking the questions, why? That just seems odd that that's in there. Why would that be in there? And again, as you start studying it and going deeper than just, oh, read through the story, the Holy Spirit's able to bring some of those things to life in your life. 
and how that works. And so studying his word, digging in to find something, okay, I'm trying to figure out how something works. And so I go to the scriptures and there's so many helps today that you can use. If you've got a topic that you're trying to figure out, you can use those tools uh, online to find out so much about searching the scriptures. You don't have to be trained in it all in order to do it. And then the fourth part of it is speaking the scriptures. I mean, I think sometimes we forget about this when we, we think about the taking it in, taking it, but this is kind of a giving out of it. In verse 13 that we read, with my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. This is especially valuable as a parent, speaking those words to your kids, speaking those words to friends, teaching them along the way, because you can always learn more. And I've discovered as a teacher, as a speaker, as a preacher, when I'm speaking the word, how often it just comes back to me. Okay, Mark, you listening to this? Uh huh. This applies to you. You need a conviction sometimes where I'm preaching and I think somebody should be convicted and it ends up being me that is convicted by it when we speak the words out. So speaking them, teaching them, sharing what you're reading, sharing what you've learned, especially again with children. Because it says the result is that I might not sin against you. Getting into God's Word is going to help your life spiritually to do what you should be doing. Now, it only makes sense. If I am on track doing what God wants me to do, then when it comes to this decision time or I need a direction on something, that's going to be natural to go into it because I'm already where God wants me to be. If I'm off doing my own thing, going my own direction, and God's trying to lead me this way, I'm not going to see it. But if I have been in his word, I am primed to see his direction, to hear his voice that comes from God's word. So the scripture guides us into right actions. The scripture also guides us into right attitudes. Sometimes that may be more important than the action. In verse 14, it says, I rejoice, an attitude. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. Time in God's word is not just going to affect what you do, figuring out the next step, what is the action of what I'm supposed to do. It also deals with us in thinking correctly, in our attitude, in our mind. Romans 12, 2, again, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you're going to be able to test and approve what God's will is. He transforms our mind. He transforms our attitude. The more uh, time I spend with Jesus, which is going to be in two forms, either prayer or in the Word of God, the more like Him I'm going to be. And that's going to be not just how I act. It's going to be who I am internally, and it matters so, so much. In fact, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, whatever is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. As we are in the Word of God, He changes my way of thinking. And we all know that that's where change has to take place in my thinking before it becomes action. Because you can do all kinds of action and follow all the right steps, but have a stinking attitude through the whole thing. And that is not what God wants for you. He wants to change you internally and then also show you the next step. Because you see, God sees the bigger picture. I'm just focused on what is this step? What am I supposed to do? I've got these different options. Which one? I need to know which one to take. God sees the bigger picture than that, and he's able to direct us and, and do it through a transformed life. And he wants to give you life to the full. 
You see, so often we think God's plan is secret and I've got to somehow work it out of him and convince him to tell me and that is not what God wants for you. But when we feel that way of why aren't you showing me, I think the question might come back, why haven't you been looking? Why haven't you been in my word to see who I am and how I act so that you can make those decisions as I guide you in it. But when you're not in the word of God and you're just doing your own thing, and then all of a sudden, God, I need your direction, it's hard for us to see. Not that he's gonna keep it from us. It's not like, nope, you haven't been in the word, so I'm not gonna tell you. That is not God at all. But I'm not able to see it. He's trying to show me, but I am so unlike him that I can't see the direction that he has for me. So, you've got to be in the Word of God. Verse 16, the last verse that I read to you at the beginning of this message is, I will not neglect your word. That's my challenge to you today. Don't neglect the Word of God. Don't just wait until you have the decision. The clearest place that God speaks to us where we know absolutely black, white, right, wrong is by his word. And so that's where we've got to start. In the next few weeks, we'll look at some of the more nuanced type of things of, okay, how can I tell when it isn't clear in God's word? And that's valuable. But you've got to start with the word of God because that's the most clear black and white way that he shows us what his will is generally for our lives so then we can figure out some of the specific decisions and be guided in those. So let me pray with you. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for your word. We take it for granted. We have such access to the Word of God more than in some places around the world. We have multiple Bibles around and we don't even take time in your Word. So Lord, we ask your forgiveness for that because if we really want your guidance, we've got to be looking at what you say. And that's found in the Word of God, in the Bible, Scriptures. So. Today, Lord, I commit myself again to be in your word and not just to have it as an add-on that fits in when I think about it, but to be daily, regularly in your word. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, church, we hope that you found today's message valuable and that it encourages you to take a next step. And a great next step is to uh, listen to our podcast called The Grow Podcast, mm -hmm. which you are on. I am. And Pastor Mark is on. It's yep. a really good podcast. If you're looking to, uh, after listening to the message, to go a little bit deeper, uh, Pastor Mark just has extra, con it's like bonus content. It's, yeah, it's like free more sermons. Yes. But it's free more conversation. Free more, more sermons <laughs> is a great way to that's describe That's the official it. tagline yep. of The Grow Podcast. Fantastic. Yeah, But it's, it's conversational. We sit down and I ask Pastor Mark a lot of questions about, about his message. We talk we, more about being guided by God's word and I ask him questions like, um, you know, what if I, what if I'm, I'm not hearing anything? What if I'm not having that illumination when I, when I'm reading God's word, that can be really frustrating and all sorts of different things. We really dive deeper into it. And so really encourage you to check that out. The new episodes go live every single Monday. You can find them on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash new hope here or on Apple podcasts or Spotify. Yes. And church come back next week as we will continue in our series, which has been so, so good. I love it. Yeah. We yeah, want to encourage really you to good. come back for that. Also come with a friend or invite yeah. a friend to, yeah. uh, to join you, or you can also share Share this message with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but 9 30, 11 15, that's when we will be here live. Until then, let's go and be the church. <laughs>